a discussion happening right now in America is about the way that we've been teaching children to read. Now, I have three kids, 13, 10, and 7. About a year and a half ago, I realized that my youngest kid does not know how to read, despite everybody around him thinking that he does. And the thing was, he had managed, because he's a smart kid, he had managed to memorize enough words to make it seem like he knows how to read. So I would have these conversations with his teachers and they would say, oh no, you're wrong. He knows how to read. He's really smart. And I'd say, I know he's really smart. He's managed to convince you he knows how to read and he doesn't because the way that we've taught reading in America for the last decade plus has been memorize these words. And somehow that works. It's whole word reading. Yeah, it's not reading. It's no sounding out. So my older two managed to still read the right way, but my younger one took the lesson, memorized all these words, a lot of words, and went through life pretending to read. Now we're having the conversation of like, wow, that was a really dumb thing to do for a while in our schools. But why did it happen in the first place? Why are we throwing random Uh, educational philosophies? I can tell you why. I can tell you how that happened. I looked into that because that's one of the preposterously stupid theories put forward by faculties of education. So here's how it happened. So if you analyze, imagine that you might start by thinking that if you wanted to teach children how to do something, you'd look at how experts do it and teach them the way the experts do it. Okay, well, that's not a bad theory. It's Not necessarily true, because experts and beginners might use different strategies, but as far as theories go, it could be stupider. So let's start with that. Okay, so now let's analyze the behavior of expert readers. Well, expert readers read words at a glance. They don't sound them out. And not only that, expert readers, if they're really expert, can probably read a whole phrase at a glance with one eye movement. And so... And so the theory was, well, experts read at the whole word level. So perhaps we should teach children to do that. Now, there's other evidence supporting that idea. So, for example, if I showed you a paragraph made up of English words where each word had the first letter and the last letter in the right place, but all the intermediary letters were scrambled, you could still read that and almost as fast. And so by the time you're an expert reader, you do recognize whole words as units. And so the theory was, well, why don't we just teach children to recognize whole words? Now, the problem with that is, well, just because that's how experts do it doesn't mean that's how they learn to do it. So that's one problem. And the second problem is that basically converts English into a form of Chinese. Now, Chinese words exactly is that each character becomes something like a, like an image instead of a sequence of letters. The whole point of the bloody alphabet is to have an alphabetic language. And the whole point of that is to allow for phonetic learning, to break down the sounds into their units, to allow children to piece together the units, and then to, to memorize the words. Now, so what happens when you learn a phonetic, when you learn phonetically, is that you first of all master the 40 sounds or so that are associated with the alphabet. Then you learn how to chunk them into, say, two-letter or three-letter combinations. Then you learn how to put them together in words. And as you do that, you build up the neural circuitry that enables you to identify the words at a glance. But you do it from the bottom up. Well, the idiot researchers... It just seems like we're teaching kids, you know, using a philosophy that we haven't thought through. I don't know very much about education. I'm not... I haven't thought it through at all. But I know that that was crazy. It was, it was research that was shoddy in the utter extreme. And this isn't new. The whole word reading dispute goes back at least 40 years. And it's absolutely 100% self-evident in the literature that if you take a school system, this happened in California, that used a phonetic approach to reading and you transform that into a school system that uses a whole word approach to reading, that you decimate the ability of the education system to teach children how to read. And we've known that for 40 years. We're experiencing a lot of global instability as we plunge into primary season. 
How are you protecting your family in the midst of all this chaos? The fact is, there is one asset that has withstood famine, wars, and political and economic upheaval dating back to biblical times, and that's gold. It's not too late to diversify an old IRA or 401k into gold, and Birch Gold Group can help you with that. Birch Gold can help you create a well-thought-out and balanced investment strategy. They'll help you convert an existing IRA or 401k into an IRA in gold without paying a penny out of pocket. Diversify into gold today. Just text Jordan to 989898 for a free info kit. With an A-plus rating with the Better Business Bureau, countless five-star reviews, and thousands of happy customers, I encourage you to check out Birch Gold today. Text Jordan to 989898. Claim your free info kit and protect your savings with gold. That's Jordan to 989898. And the faculties of education are still debating whether or not this is true. And that's only one of the many unbelievably foolish things they managed to do. And here's some more. They're the originators of the self-esteem movement. And because of their cockeyed version of what constituted self-esteem, they ended up teaching children to be narcissistic instead of to be confident. And narcissists pretend to be confident. That's how they, and mimic it. And when you do explicit self-esteem training, you, you train narcissism, not confidence. We have social emotional learning. We have learning styles. We have all these idiot educational fads that, and there's not an iota of good research data suggesting that they do anything but harm. And that's all, that can all be put at the foot of the faculties of education. But they're entirely enabled by idiot Republicans, for example, who aren't smart enough to notice that they're losing the cultural war because they've handed over the entire educational enterprise to social justice warriors. And it doesn't take that much thinking to figure that out. Yeah. I mean, one of the other discoveries that we made in researching stolen youth, and again, this is something that I would have thought was a conspiracy theory before we started writing this book, but in teachers' colleges, they use Marxist books to teach the teachers. So the teachers themselves get indoctrinated and then they spread out throughout the country and they indoctrinate the kids. They don't even know what's happening. They don't know that they've learned critical theory and that they're passing it along to children. They, they think that they've learned something good. Um, so I think a lot of this, like, I don't know why Republicans don't spend all their time talking about it. I think the reason I would have thought it was a conspiracy theory is because how can it be in America that the teachers' colleges are using Marxist books and they're coming up with con concepts like two plus two is not always four. And it's not front page news every day. It's not the main thing that all of our politicians talk about all the time. How could that be? And that's really, again, part of the reason that we needed this book to be published is because we felt like for a long time, you could say, I, I didn't know, I don't know. These politicians can say, I don't know. Well, again, read our book and there's no way to say, I didn't know. Yeah, well, you know, I see this happening in Canada. There's a conservative government in Ontario and not, and there's a conservative minister of education in Ontario. And nonetheless, the school system there is as woke as hell. And what happens consistently is that these bloody Marxist doctrines are put forward under the rubric of anti-racism, let's say. And idiot politicians who don't do their homework or who are afraid of being pilloried see the word anti-racist and they think, because the leftists are very sneaky in this regard, they think, oh, well, if it's anti-racist, we have to be for it. And they don't look at all to see what is being transmitted, what ideas are being transmitted in the guise of this so-called anti-racism. And they are a strange hybrid of postmodernism, you know, and the postmodernists dispute the existence of any uniting narratives whatsoever. And the Marxists, well, I suppose they trump that by claiming that there's nothing else but power. And the conservatives are so damn blind that this goes on under their noses constantly, and they often facilitate its movement forward. And it's because they're, they're either ignorant, that's part of the problem, or they're afraid on the moral front. And neither of those are excusable, especially when hypothetically they're concerned about losing the cultural war, which they are definitely losing. Well, look at the abuse and pushback that Governor DeSantis gets, even from other Republicans, you know, people that are in the public eye, the, the Chris Christie's of the world and such. They say things like he, DeSantis sparks cultural wars. Well, cultural wars are really important because a war for the culture matters. Culture matters. So, yes, we should be fighting these wars. I think so much of what we talk about is 
um, dismissed by the left and we let them dismiss it. We let them say, oh, this doesn't matter, but it does matter. And we should be talking about it all the time. I think that the schools and the fight for our schools is so important. So another thing that Republicans are doing right now, look, I love the idea of school choice, which is, you know, supplying vouchers to parents so that they could pull their kids out of failing public schools and go to parochial schools or private schools. But that's nowhere near enough. Most people still send their kids to the local public school. So the idea that Republicans have like, oh, I passed a school voucher bill, I'm done, is ridiculous. We have to fight for the schools. We have to fight for the curriculums. We have to fight for the kids who go to those schools. We can't just give up on them and say like, oh, we'll hand out vouchers. That's just simply not enough. Well, if if all your voucher choice is between one woke school or another, it's not helpful in the least. And well, that's part of the reason too why I think it's necessary to go to the source of the problem and the faculties of education, which I think should just be abolished. There's certainly their monopoly on teacher certification should be revoked like tomorrow and permanently because there's no excuse for it whatsoever. The other thing that's so bloody idiotic about this that it's almost a kind of miracle of stupidity is that If you look at the teachers' unions, for example, and you look at where they donate all of their uh, monetary support, I think it's 99% Democrat. So what you have is this strange spectacle where not only do the Republicans hand over children and the future to the woke mob via the vehicle of the faculties of education, but they actually facilitate the development of these immense organizations, the teachers' unions and so forth, that do nothing but fundraise for their for their opponents 100% of the time. I mean, it's no bloody wonder that the conservatives are being rolled over. You know, and, and it's, it's not even that the leftists are, what would you say, pushing the conservatives or circumventing the conservatives. The conservatives are so damn blind that they help the leftists do this. 